so before I came down to this mental heart health psychology path in this new career for 12 years, you know, I was in the corporate world. I was living in Sydney, uh, Rose Bay and 12 hour days was kind of my vibe, you know, and then at nighttime, it's the alcohol, the glass of wine, the, the gin to take the edge off the stress while I'm socializing with friends and clients. It's the limited sleep to wake up in the morning to go triathlon training. It's the three coffees to get to work. It's that hit of, you know, the pavement are pretty hard and it's that whole rise and grind mentality. Part of the hustle culture is also um, very much entwined with the health culture. Um, and mm. certainly, you know, the past couple of years, we've seen um, conversations around health and, you know, quasi experts in this space pop up and offer all sorts of advice and support. But I think it's really interesting, the work that you do. And, and one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on the show is that you're very much focused on the science of rejuvenation, longevity, um, revitalization, and you look at it from multimodal perspective. Uh, a lot of um, the work that you do with that, you know, C-suite executive uh, and corporations is around identifying um, the triggers and mm -hmm. also making uh, people understand that cortisol, which is the stress hormone, will not only kill you, but it will aid you. It will rob mm -hmm. you of um, life force and mm -hmm. um, can potentially be stopped. And you can, it's one of those things that you can actually uh, modify and claim back. So I want to talk to you first about uh, what you see in your practice uh, at that, you know, um, whether it's a mid-age or uh, a certain level of success. What are some of the um, signs of burnout that you see? And then let's talk about the triggers that lead to those burnouts and that spike in cortisol, which is the beginning of the end. Mm. So I think there's a few things, you know, like in terms of burnout, and I know my own symptoms when I'm getting burnt out, which will set me on a spiral of a mental health relapse. So I'm very aware of these kinds of things. For me, and you might see this with high performers, is that they get very productive, almost like hyperproductive, where they take on more and more. And which sounds great, right? In theory, like imagine, you know, doing your tax while painting your house at the same time, like that all sounds fantastic. But where it actually gets dangerous is when it can kind of slip into mania and then you are not sleeping because you have got this overactive mind at night time and then it kind of perpetuates down into this very very dangerous spiral some other things around you know what are people saying around you like there's it, as an are you okay ambassador we kind of say okay these are the signs and symptoms to look out for whether it's burnout or for mental health decline things like if people are saying hey i'm feeling overwhelmed or i'm feeling burnt out they're kind of signs or that, you know, you're having those conversations in your mind to what are people doing? Have you been noticing that you're now starting to cancel plans because you don't have the energy right to go out and social, which is absolutely fine. I think that's really important to be aware of that and set good boundaries. Are you noticing that you are now drinking more alcohol at nighttime as your coping mechanism? Are you more irritable? Are you noticing that your sleep's getting impacted? Are you midnight snacking? You know, it's just kind of owning this, like what we are unique to each individual. And the other thing to look out for is what's going on in your life. You know, have you just gone through a divorce? Has someone in your life just got sick? Has, you know, have you just had a baby? It could be a positive trigger that sets you off. Uh, so I think it's a couple of things of being aware and being really educated and empowered to notice what it is for you. And so I know my signs definitely. And I think that's a really important thing just to go inward and go, well, what is it? What is it when I do feel stressed? Do I get a sty in my eye? Do I get um, a gastro kind of an upset stomach? Do I get eczema? Do I get psoriasis in my hair? Do I get palsy? Like half my face will drop. These are like significant stress signs of going, hang on a second. I need to take a break. I need to probably go on a holiday right, and have a full reset if you're getting down to those kinds of levels. So I think it's just taking your time, maybe while you're listening to this podcast and pausing and going, well, what is it for me? What is kind of my stress trigger? Let's talk about hormonal tests because I'm 48, you're about to turn 41. 
Um, but the hormone tests aren't just for women or perimenopausal or menopausal. Hormone tests tell you a big story about where you're at, correct? And men need mm. to do it too. I get all my male friends to check their hormones. It is extraordinary how many men are low in testosterone and how revitalized they feel from that one supplementation. And they would Absolutely. die if they ever, you know, at first they're like, no, I, uh, it's, but yeah, like what a power um, hormone to up if you need Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, some men are very active and they lift weights and they do natural ways to elevate their testosterone. They're sleeping over seven hours a night and they, they're really active in the gym. Like my husband, I think his testosterone levels are off the charts. I'm like, babe, can you just like dial down your testosterone? I'm like, he's just constantly hitting me up. I'm like, babe, just, just leave me alone. All right. <laughs> um, That's a good but, husband to keep. You keep that one. Yeah, I know. We've been together for like 22 years. Um, and so he, he's a great guy actually. Uh, so I think the hormones are really underrated and I think it's, uh, do you just do your blood test through your doctor to get your hormones checked? Or yes, do you use I, another? I do. Yeah. So I have an anti-aging doctor. So, um, I, I do, uh, the full range of hormone tests every year. And then I take prescription DHEA. I, I take metformin for anti-aging, which is a diabetic medication that I've talked about before um, under her supervision, but it regulates blood sugar, um, it stimulates collagen, it regulates um, fat burning, and uh, the DHEA is all the hormones that I need. I don't do HRT because I find the mm -hmm. DHEA is plenty hormone management for me. Um, but yeah, it, it completely changed my performance. And if we're talking simply about energy, performance, mm. mental youth, uh, you know, physical drive, sexual drive, all the hallmarkers of youth, it was the hormone test that really changed the way that I live and the way that I turn up in the world for my daughter, for my friends, for my lover all of those things. It was, it was just such a, it was a light switch moment again. And the blood test really helped me understand where my deficiencies were. So I was able to make modifications to diet. Um, mm -hmm. I take, I uh, get vitamin B12 injected when I'm feeling a bit low because I tend mm -hmm. to metabolize vitamin B very quickly and I always need it. I get my vitamin D injected because it lasts mm -hmm. longer. And I, and I already take so many supplements. It was just one less supplement to take. That's incredible. Who's your anti-aging doctor? I work you... with Dr. Alia Nasser. And in fact, I interviewed her in this issue of Ageless magazine. She is a phenomenal um, doctor and she really changed my life. And again, I sent everyone to her. She's at the Verve Clinic in Willara in Sydney. That's amazing. Do you know what's so funny is that her books are going to be full, right? Like in terms of, so I've got an integrative doctor who is phenomenal, but I'm going to go and see your anti-aging doctor as well. And I recommended her at all my keynotes because I see about 5,000 people a week, right? At these keynote events. And I used to speak about her all the time. And then she literally got book, so booked out, she couldn't see me. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> I need to come hey, and see hey, you hey. still. <laughs> um, but I think that's just so, so important. And and also as about aging is that whole, you know, that whole sexual um, function as well is such a key, important component. It's a, and it's a youth marker. You know, if you feel it's... youthful and vital, if you have a healthy sex drive, if you feel um, energized to enjoy that aspect of your life and without the enjoyment and without the energy to enjoy that aspect of your life, the knock-on effects are huge. That is, that's a really, really important conversation. So just for a complete vulnerable share here, so I'm on a medication called Zoloft, which is a SSRI. And my psychiatrist put me on that after having giving birth to Clara. I've come off it twice. I've had a relapse twice. So I'll be on this medication probably until I die at 95. And that's okay, right? I'm very high functioning. I sleep really well. I do everything in the toolkit. And this is what I always say to people when you're taking medication. You can't just rely on the medication. And we're not like doctors. We are under the care. And I always like to say, absolutely, this, don't do what I do. Go see the doctors. I'm absolutely. such an advocate for the science. Get your own team of anti-aging, biohacking, life-affirming experts. 
Yes, absolutely. And I think that's, that's really, really important. Like that's a huge disclaimer is that you must go and see an expert. Like you have to go and see a doctor. Every time I see my psychiatrist, which is once a year, I talk to her about this kind of stuff, right? Because one of the side effects of Zoloft is uh, sexual dysfunction for both genders. And so you notice, you'll notice, not everyone, but some people notice whether it's the side effect of a bit of weight gain or whether it's a side effect of sexual dysfunction. So your libido might drop uh, or you might not be able to orgasm or whatever that is. And I was having a conversation to her about this for me. And I look a lot at the research because I'm at university. So I'm always looking at PubMed SSRIs because when you're taking something, you want to know everything about it. One nice silver lining of SSRIs is that some of them actually produce more uh, neurogenesis in the hippocampus, in the memory center. And I noticed that on Zoloft, it's like a performance drug for me. I actually have a sharper memory on it. So I like that component of it, but the sexual dysfunction thing is a, is a thing. So I called my psychiatrist last. November and I said it's unacceptable I'm 40 <laughs> we need to talk about this and find a solution let's talk about what you see when you know when you have these clients that have come to you at the point of burnout so we talked about the physical tests and that checklist that you uh, is your go-to which again I really applaud I love that you know you're a mindfulness coach but you really understand the physical impact of stress cortisol spikes life changes the hustle culture what are the other things that you um maybe some practical tips that you get them to start working on that can help yeah so i think a few things like if they are feeling burnt out like i would actually get them to take on some things to help reduce their stress so whether that's through meditation which has just been so clinically studied now whether that's uh to do some breathing activities whether that's to do a practice of gratitude journal and again our whole thing is to actually make sure that we give them a buffet of tools so they're not you know so they can lean up against something that they really enjoy right there's no point you know doing everything and not everyone's going to warm to absolutely every single tool so i always talk about it as like this buffet of like this this toolkit that they can do um so I, those kinds of stress management practices another couple of things that i get them to do is cut out their triggers so things like alcohol like if i when i have my mental health i've had two now these mental health relapses and again the trigger was because i pushed myself too hard i signed a book deal you know similar story to yours where i actually had it in a really happy time like we trained a hundred thousand people we bought a house i signed a book deal the deadline was too tight and i relapsed and the beautiful thing is i now know my sign so I can act very very quickly and just own it right like I just called my psychiatrist the next day I told her what happened she's like it's okay let's get you straight back onto Zoloft let's pause the company for a month and and double down on self-care and two of those things I'll do straight away when I'm feeling like that is I cut out alcohol and caffeine now when you are stressed and you're burnt out and you're in the trenches I can guarantee you right now you don't want to drink alcohol and you don't want to have coffee because you want to recover you're in this kind of rehab right so you want to recover as quickly as you possibly can to get yourself back on track because when you are burnt out or you're feeling like you just you got nothing left to give not only do you suffer but so do the people around you the people that you love the most in this world like my daughter clara and my husband jay so i need to recover as quickly as what i know possible mm-hmm.